Charlie yeah. has a nicer robe than I do. I should get a new one. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I to uh, totally nicer. Yeah. I got to get <laughs> oh, a new one. Oh, my goodness. That's very nice. <laughs> I bought this one at Target in San Diego when I was visiting my sister about 15 years ago. I don't know what the fabric is exactly, but it looks just the same as it did then. Oh, so it's and I do wash it and everything, so it's just indestructible. It's plastic. It's a it's, it's evidently plastic. <laughs> I won't stand near flame. <laughs> Better not. <laughs> Hi, good morning, Charlie Jordan. Good morning, Sarah. Hi, John. Can't wear a robe because. I have to wear humble for green and gold Friday. Every Friday, I've got to get up and find something humble. Why doesn't on. humble make a, a green and gold robe for goodness sake? That's sake. a really good idea. marketing people about that. <laughs> now it's jammies time. anyway, you know. Now's the time. They probably would sell a lot of those. <laughs> Quarantine robes. Yeah. It's like, it's like Harry Potter. You come to class in your robes. Yeah. yeah, I thought that was cool. Yeah, is, it, is Amanda on? Because Amanda would know whether they had them at the bookstore. I bet they don't. They have them at the bookstore. I would think they would. Seems yeah. like they're missing a bet if they don't. Yeah, yeah. for sure. All right, yeah. I have a t new to-do list this week. Sorry about yeah. that. Yep. Hey, but it's, it's you <laughs> and not me. You're the one that cop to it, Romy. That you're like, I don't have <laughs> green and gold <laughs> robe every Friday. Green and gold. And oh, walking to the, Death was the, here. She would be in green and gold as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, walking from your your dorm room to the showers, you got to be wearing your green and gold robe. You do. You're right. Easy sale. Easy sale. This must exist. <laughs> Isn't that what the graduation outfit is for? <laughs> That's a black robe. <laughs> I always play pomp and circumstance when I'm going from my bedroom to my bathroom. <laughs> you mean you just hear voices in your head, maybe? <laughs> the music, the music. It's so hard to tell. There's so many. <laughs> now I have that visual of uh, Dick going to the bathroom singing Pop and Circumstance. Singing Pop and Circumstance. Oh, God. <laughs> now I'm going to hum it all the time. All day. Oh, dear. <laughs> and we're off the rails. All right. <laughs> Oh, shoot. I think whenever I see Nick, I remember I have to go to Venmo. <laughs> oh, thank That's you. That's right. When you see Nick, it means you should send money to our club. It doesn't matter where you see him or the context. <laughs> when you see Nick, you send us money. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good to see, good to see those of you that I see. Welcome. We're going to, um, I changed my slides. I like this. Anyway, you see what you see what I do in my spare time. Actually, when I went to Mad River Rotary, I told them a very short bio. It said I've worked with, in senior services since 1985, and in my spare time, I wrote, I'm a Rotarian. And they thought, oh, okay, that's pretty basic. But yeah, right now, um, reminder about uh, the Rotary. Um, values, valuing of diversity and celebrating contributions of people of all backgrounds. Maggie, I don't hate to interrupt, but you're not sharing oh, your screen. Son of a biscuit. <laughs> okay, well, this was, um, this was a challenge I had. Let's see. But you guys have memorized all this, so. Um, we can see each other. That's fine. Well, there you, you go. And see, now Ooh. that you can see there that. There you go, Maggie. And it's not, you're seeing that, but not my email because, okay, great. Um, because then it, what it does is it shrinks my screen so I don't get to see hardly any of you. So that's kind of sucky. But anyway, we'll get through this. We'll, we'll survive. We'll survive. The main thing is we want to introduce our, some of our guests. So I can't see you all, and this is really frustrating. My computer did some rebooting things this morning, and I don't understand it. But let's introduce our guest. Linda, you want to start and just introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Linda Wise. I'm the general manager of Recology, all the Recology operations in Humboldt County. I'm also a Rotarian um, for the Monday group. And um, thank you for having me this morning. Cool. Um, yeah, I'll have more to tell you later. Yes, you will. Thank you for being here. Lucy, hi. Hello, good morning. I'm Lucy Robson. I'm the homeless youth caseworker for Humboldt County Office of Education. 
I work with um, students at Glen Paul and our court and community schools here in the County of Humble. Great, welcome. And we're gonna hear a bit from you in a minute too. Do I, I, I am not, if there's anyone else out there who is a visiting person of any type, Rotarian or otherwise, could you introduce yourselves? Does anybody see anybody? That would help me because my, like I said, my screen is not functioning the way I need it to. Zoe Andre from uh, Interact is, is joining us as well. Great. Oh, there she is. Hi, Zoe. Hi. Yeah, I'm from Interact. <laughs> Welcome. Okay, to hi, Interact. Thanks. Yeah, wonderful. Good to have you here. We're going to hear from you too. So that's great. Welcome. Anybody else? Well, it's great seeing you all um, and having you here. Thank you for joining us. And let's get right into it. Um, we're going to start with recognition. And we're going to start uh, with, uh, this is World Interact Week. And so we thought, Zoe, we would have you come and tell us what's going on with Interact. OK, thank you. Um, I'm from Arcata High Interact. I'm the vice president of the club this year. Um, we are a service and volunteering club, and um, we dedicate our time to performing uh, charitable acts, volunteering opportunities in our community, and we're also sponsored by um, Rotary Club of Arcata, and we like get guidance from members of the Rotary Club of Arcata. Um, in the past, we've been doing a lot of, like a lot of events, um, volunteering opportunities, a lot of stuff that is not possible this year due to COVID-19 restrictions. But in the past, we used to do some events like we'd help with Toys for Tots, we'd um, help at Food for People, or with charity events such as like the Wine Festival. Um, and those are have been really fun and we felt like our clubs made a big impact to that. But this year we're kind of having to refocus how we're like doing our volunteering opportunities and being creative because of new restrictions. So right now we're working on doing a lot of like outdoor events and just like being yeah creative with what events we do. We just participated in or and helped with the Halloween drive by on the plaza, which I think was pretty fun. And we also have planned, we're gonna be doing like an outdoor tree planning and like um, like cleanup of an area near uh, Arcata High. So I'm excited that we have stuff that we can still do this year with COVID-19 because it definitely um, changes some of the normal events we can do. But so yeah, right now we're just really working on being creative with the events we're going to do for the rest of this year and still trying to make like a important impact with our volunteering in the community. Well, that, that's great. And you're kind of in the same boat we are, is trying to make sure that we can do things safely and still have an impact. Um, and I know that now that you're, you guys are functioning, um, if there's events or things that we're doing, we're always, we'll let you know about them. So if you want to participate, you can. And, um, and let us know, too. So um, I think, you know, it sounds like Nick is your liaison with our club to let us know what's going on. So please keep us posted so that we can support you and um, invite you to things that we're doing. Definitely would like to see you guys out there, even if at a distance with or with proper physical distancing, it would be great to, to be able to work with you guys. So thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So um, just everyone know that, that Interact is, it's a celebration this week of their work. So if you know an Interactor or know somebody who ought to be an Interactor, point them, send them, send them to Interact's way, whatever school they might be. They, even if they don't live locally, they might have an Interact club in the school they're in somewhere else. So um, I'm seeing somebody here, hold on a second. I am not happy with my screens today. I just have to tell you, going on record. 
I see somebody there. Oh, is that you, Sarah, on the beach? I just, yeah, it is. Okay, good. I just want to make sure. <laughs> I thought, wait, I've seen somebody. Your hair is pulled back, but it's you. So, Jamie, here is your blue badge. Just wanted you to have it so you could take it home, frame Yay. it, <laughs> do whatever you need. Bravo. Um, again, we heard from you last week. It was wonderful. And there now you are officially, officially, officially. So, wonderful. Welcome. Yes. Make sure you take a screenshot and paste it to your chest. That's right. That's right. And uh, and if you're not signed up for a committee yet, please, um, committee chairs, go after him. Get him going. Get him on your committee. Thank you. Um, we're going to jump into some service stuff. We want to recognize um, some backpack folks. Lisa, do you want to? Sure. Um, so I want to thank everyone that's been helping out with Backpack for Kids since we started the program in October. Um, Tammy has helped out the first couple times and it was awesome. We packed the bags at our house and Mike Hazian was there. Um, Rebecca hosted at her home and her family helped pack the bags. So that worked out. And Ashley did last week in, um, down, in Fort, down in Ferndale or Fortuna and her family packed the bags. And then yesterday, Cam and Lisa packed the bags and delivered um, yesterday morning. So that worked out really well. And next week is Lori, and she's looking for a couple of volunteers to come over. And so that would be great. And as I looked at Sign Up Genius, there wasn't anyone else that was signed up for the following weeks, but we've got only a few more weeks left until Christmas vacation. So if you see your sign up genius, please, we only need a couple people, but please look at it and sign up. But thank you so much for those that did um, host in their homes. That was just really wonderful. Thank you so much. Great. Yes, thank you. And if you're on the list for the fall, please, please jump in um, because uh, we, this is, it may seem like a lot of work in the moment, but when you compare um, the output and what it does and who it helps, it's it's worth the time. And 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 we all have we all have that much time to do something good. So um, please sign up and um, make it happen. Thank you. So Veterans Day on the Plaza, we've got that coming up. And uh, and then we uh, are going to continue to the Griffin. So do or on Zoom or on Zoom. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so the fellowship committee, our Sunrise Wednesday, which is our monthly um, social that we encourage members to come and join us at, um, starts on the plaza at four o'clock. Uh, Michael um, has been involved with setting up a flag ceremony to be able to honor veterans. And I know I went last year, it was really, it was very moving, very interesting. And I would certainly encourage people to come. You can certainly be able to socially distance on the plaza. And then um, afterwards, starting at say about 5.15 or so, we invite you to either uh, join us on Zoom or uh, at the Griffin uh, for, a, for our Sunrise Wednesday social. And our theme this month is uh, veterans. So um, we'll look forward to any members with veterans in their lives. Please bring a picture of your veteran, maybe bring a story about your veteran, um, and, and we'll um, work to encourage the conversation with regard to the veterans and, and, and trying to honor those who have um, taken a sacrifice for our country and, and really appreciating the service that they have, that they have done. So um, that's our Veterans Day, Sunrise Wednesday activities, so. Awesome, and I, we will be sending out the link to that um, after this meeting. Okay. I will send that out so you all have it. And um, I'll make sure that it gets posted to Slack also so that, so that if you're on Slack, uh, you can be able to access it. That, that we found that that's kind of a convenient place to go get links if you need them, so yeah. All right. Mike, you're talking, but there you go. Okay, real quick. Um, uh, 124 Redwood Rangers uh, Boy Scout Troop is joining us. Uh, they are very excited about uh, participating and have done COVID-19 events, so they're schooled on all of that, 
and uh, it's wonderful. Thanks. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and I just was checking the chat and Brandy had a question. I thought it'd be a good time to answer. Remember when we were all voting like crazy with State Farm to try to get Fieldbrook their, um, their whatever thing they needed. Um, they did not come in the top group to win, but they were so impressed by how this little community just was the little engine that tried really hard and that support that they ended up getting the money to buy the thing anyway. Nice. So Cam, nice. Did you, do you know any more? Do you have any details about that? I don't want to put you on the spot, but I just got an email from Carol Reese and that's what she said. So, um, so, you know, they, you know, we just were outgunned by, by some of the places, but for where we are and how hard we work, they, they got it anyway, um, which I think is incredible. So um, congratulations, those of you who voted every day, many days, whatever it was. Um, I just, that to me is just amazing. So Brandy, yeah, thank thank you. Us that. yeah, Cam. Uh, thanks to everybody for all your support. It was um, amazing that we were able to get where we did, but the, uh, something happened between the time we, we, uh, finished voting and, and now, um, so the, uh, but I, apparently uh, State Farm was so impressed, as Maggie said, that I've heard two different versions. One is that they're gonna buy the air compressor that we want, and the other one was that they're gonna come up with some money for the air compressor. So I don't know which one's happening, but uh, we'll keep you posted. Yeah. Either way works. Either way works. You get yeah. it. Thank you. Fantastic. Yes. Thank you. So, um, Sarah, I'm going to turn the turn it over to you to see what we've got here. Perfect. So, um, I actually invited Lucy Robson to to talk about this uh, exciting opportunity, capacity. Uh, Lucy Robson is currently working as a homeless youth caseworker for Humboldt County Office of Education. This is her first year with this position, but has worked with high youth, high risk populations of youth within Humboldt County throughout her work history. As a former foster youth, she feels very passionate and dedicated to serve this population to the best of her ability. And she's always aiming to learn more about how to better serve our youth. So thank you so much for coming to our meeting, Lucy, and sharing this exciting opportunity. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so yes, I work with Humboldt County Office of Education and we have partnered with this new app based technology called Curposity. Um, it is an app that you can download on your smartphones and then you would look to follow Humboldt County Office of Education on there. What the app does is the easiest way I can describe it is um, it's like online shopping, but not for yourself. So I would be the organizer for the central reason, region of Humboldt County. And any of the LEAs um, in, in your area could send me a message that would say, there's a five-year-old who goes to Arcata Elementary. He always wears the same hoodie and um, he wears a size 5T and he likes the color red. And I could post that up onto the app. And anyone who has the app would get the alert and they could choose to either fill that need for that child or not. Um, we've talked to Shasta County Office of Ed and they've had really great success with this. Any family is eligible to receive these items, and they're generally low ticket items. Um, so, and then we have an LEA down in Southern Humboldt who would be the organizer for that area. And it's a great way to give, and it's pretty contactless, which is important right now in this time of COVID, because it would either, we could ship it to the school where the student is, or, or I could put it in the mailbox for the school at the County Office of Ed. 
So I don't know if, if, if anyone has any questions about it, I can answer them. So um, it'd be good if I could get the link to the, you know, the information and I can send it out to everybody afterwards. So if you, or you could put it in the chat, but I, I still would like to send it to people so that they can. So basically it's an app that you're able to see the needs that students are having. And if you want to um, address that need directly, you just follow the instructions on the app and you can do that. Is that what you're saying? Basically it's um, a way to just support folks in the community that you may not even know yes yeah so I um I put the links in the chat for iPhone or Android right now you could go to the I think it's like the Google Play Store and the Apple store to download the app and then um as a follower you would follow Humboldt County Office of Education and only myself and one other um, organizer at this point, because our community hasn't grown enough on the app, would be able to post the need. So you would reach out to your, like if you know your LEAs in your area, or Can you myself. describe what an LEA is? It is yeah. a local education, educational, oh man. I don't know what the A is. Maybe. At, any rate, at any rate, it's a person who does something. It's, it's actually a person it's, that you're talking about. LEAs are people. They are people who are at the schools. Every school should have one. Yeah, a school district or charter school. And, and every one of those schools has a trained person on their staff who does kind of what I do, which is, um, you know, identify and track homeless and foster youth and um, work with that population. So, or you could reach out to me and I, I could post it. I have a five-year-old son. He's growing through his shoes at an enormous rate, you know, so not that I would do this, but someone, you know, his teacher could recognize, oh, Abel's shoes always have holes in them. Reach out to the person at the school and say, there's a five-year-old at my school. He likes the color red. He wears a size 11. And you as a follower uh, on the app would get that alert. Awesome. So. That's really great. Well, we appreciate you coming this morning and sharing this with us. I know uh, a few months ago, or well, I'm guessing time is irrelevant at this point. But um, but I think Joyce sent some information out about this um, about this project, and I'm I'm glad to hear it again because I think uh, hearing from somebody about it helps put it makes it a little more real. So please check out that app, um, everybody, and if, put it on your phone. And when you feel like you can help out a little bit, um, go for it. Um, thank you so much, Lucy. Thank you, Sarah, for bringing this to us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, and the reason why I wanted to bring it here is because there, you know, we've done in the past like clothing drives or coat drives and other things like that. So this might be something that people could use instead of to donate to those people in need without having to go and see people in person. Right. Great. And, and I just want to say we are only six followers away from being able to launch this project. So it's been a labor of love through COVID to get the word out. So thank you for letting me be here this morning. Well, Do I the think clothes have to be new or can they be used? We ought to be able to get you six follow, follow, followers today, I would hope. So um, let's, let's do that, guys. Let's see if we can get six of us to sign up for this and, and get, it, get it going. Thank, thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. That's great. Um, okay. So we're going to shine a little light on the dark room that Dustin's in here. Dustin? <laughs> Sorry. It's lighter now that we got the time change. That's right. Well, you know. I, I, that's what I that planned the whole time. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, what we have coming up um, November 16th through the 22nd is um, Gratefulness Week. Um, so what that is, zones 26 and 27 were asked to 
um, participate with this and try to put it together. And we'll be um, in some way or another honoring our um, essential workers, just showing them some sort of appreciation for all the work they've been doing. And um, knowing that this work comes at personal risk um, to themselves, to their families, and to their friends, um, as well as the stress of different shift changes or business changes or time changes. Um, and essential workers is essentially, it's, it's a uh, umbrella term. So there's no specific group of workers or people um, that this is really aimed at. It's really anyone that we considered, um, you know, or, or I guess anyone that we want to show our appreciation for, for the work they've done dur during the, uh, uh, the pandemic. Um, and so what this is collectively, zones 26 and 27 um, were, um, what, 40 districts combined. And during this week, um, all the Rotary Clubs in this district, or as many as we can get, or sorry, in, these, in our big west zones, um, all the clubs uh, in there, we're gonna try to get to participate in this and see what we can put together. Um, and so it can be as big as a car parade. Um, some uh, clubs have already chosen to partner with other organizations and um, sponsor signs, thinking their fire departments or, um, or other uh, workers. Um, we can send out thank you cards. The idea though is just to, um, just to have some show of appreciation for uh, the work and the effort they've done. Um, uh, Jarita Solari, she's our um, Internet Rotary International Director, um, sort of spearheaded this uh, during one of our uh, zone meetings about a month and a half ago. Um, so that week is coming up, and um, if anyone has any ideas or uh, wants to spearhead uh, our club's effort, uh, that'd be great. So I don't know if we have time to chat a little bit about this or not, but um, um, hopefully we can get something on the board and uh, do something as a club to participate. Yeah, um, Dustin, it might be great if you picked a if you picked a target since we don't have a lot of time. If we picked, um, you know, there's all kinds of good groups we could support. But if you you know or, or you know if you picked a target and then maybe we and sending information out to all of us about what we could all do for that. Is there anybody here that might want to um, work with Dustin on just kind of um, you know getting that picking a group that we want to, you know, do we want to do the hospital, what, you know, what we want to do and get real specific because it would have to be put together pretty quickly. Um, anybody interested in kind of just brainstorming that with Dustin and, and then getting us an email? Not everybody at once. Yeah, no, I'm sure that <laughs> Cam's waving. Cam, are you waving? Cam is willing and AJ is willing. Okay, you've got you've got a team to start with, and um, and I would recommend keep it simple and keep it focused. And and I think we'd all I think we'd all be able to probably find some kind of way that we could do something toward that group. But I think we need you guys to narrow it down a little bit because otherwise we'll spend the next two weeks figuring out what to do, um, and that probably is not effective. So. So that's AJ and Cam and Dustin. If anybody wants to, to pipe in or after that, let Dustin. We've got Barbara Browning on board too. Barbara's so. on board, good, okay. Yep. Yep. Awesome, that would be great. Let's do something, let's target. Um, you know, I, and I, I, know, I know Measure F passed, but um, every time, like I was out yesterday in McKinleyville and I'm driving around different parts of McKinleyville and I don't know McKinleyville that well, but I'm learning to know it since a lot of you live there and I go and stalk you, but, um, but, uh, you laugh and like that's a joke. Anyway, um, <laughs> but, uh, this is a huge area that we are trying to cover with three fire, you know, three stations that weren't even all open. And it's kind of scary because I drive by and I see all the houses that each of those houses could have a fire and how to get to them. So, so um, though I was thinking not just that's worrisome, but I was thinking about the enormous stress that firefighters in our district must be under on a constant basis 
to to feel like they have to make sure they cover everything that needs to be covered. Um, it just struck me that that would be an incredibly stressful stressful experience to kind of constantly be worried that you're not going to be able to do it. Um, so anyway, maybe they are people we we want to reach out to. But that just struck me as my God, you know, this is a, this is a huge area for a small group of people to try to work through. So. Thank you, Dustin. Appreciate it. Appreciate the team for volunteering. Um, we're going to jump to, to uh, something else that uh, we are excited to give you all more information about. Um, I'll turn it over to Charlie. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> so for those who don't know, the T committee and the and the vocational committee have kind of combined our efforts and we applied for the district grant which we received um, <clears throat> and our application was based on helping uh, homeless and foster youth. Uh, we reached out to Transitional Age Youth Services of Humboldt County which we had a tour of um, a couple of months ago maybe um, and we asked them what their needs were. Um, part of their needs were employment opportunities and resources for their kids. So our, in our grant, we actually were able to propose and we were accepted to fund seven internships for uh, homeless youth. Um, so we're removing barriers for a lot of them. Um, the grant will supply them with a clothing allowance, uh, funds for an ID, transportation, um, other little things like that. Right now we're just doing a, um, an outreach for Rotarians who are interested in employing or having an intern. Um, the, these internships will not only give them work experience, but they'll connect them to our community members. Um, and they are paid internships, which is wonderful. So hopefully given them that work experience and, and connection to the community will help them on their journey. We're really excited about this. Um, and then anyone who is interested or has more questions for me, um, I'm gonna put my cell phone number in the chat box and also my email and just reach out to me and then I'll just contact you personally and be like, what, what, what's your idea? What kind of expectations you have? Of course, there'll be um, the youth that we'll be working with will be, um, they're, we're working on the application process and they'll be vetted by Tay and other organizations. So yeah, we're really just excited to offer this opportunity to our, our young members in our community. And you know, when she says they're paid internships, the grant is paying for the 32 hour internship. So you as a business um, will not be paying that. Um, the other part is, is um, Sequoia personnel has graciously, Tomas has graciously agreed to run run all these um, these employees through their system so you won't be spending the time you know doing the hiring process um, in that respect and they've agreed to waive their fee so they're just charging us what it costs to pay pay the person and pay the taxes um, so really keeping it down so that's a great opportunity and and so it's it's a chance for you to help a, help a youth you're not putting your own money into it. It's a 32 hour um, internship. So it's a, a way for you to help them with some skills and maybe you end up having a job that you wanna hire them into after. But if not, it's a way for them to learn about work and for you to, to help them and, and maybe we've set up a good match. Um, so it's a great opportunity, but we need seven internships, uh, so. So let Chris, let let Charlie Crystal know um, if uh, if that's something that you're interested in, or, or or talk to her to get more information. And it really can be any any place, you know, any possible situation. So um, we really appreciate that. Are there any more questions for her? Anybody think this sounds a little interesting? Kind of worth checking out a little bit. I've got a I've got a couple uh, private messages, so I'm glad. Um, again, I'll put it in my my awesome. uh, text and my cell phone and my email in the chat. Thank you, guys. Great. 
Great. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for doing that. All right.